Did you know that you can stream the best of HBO shows and more with the new Astro? Better than before, no rain interruptions, no repeats. Just stream anytime and on demand via the Astro Ultrabox. It starts from only RM5990 a month, and you can find out more information at astro.com.my. You're listening to the Goggle Podcast, Bahir and Uma with you. And today we're going to be talking about the second season of Julia on HBO. The first season dropped last year, March 2022, and it is essentially based on the life of Julia Child at that transition point when she makes it onto television. The second season picks up with Julia in France. She is kind of looking for inspiration to finish volume two of Mastering the Art of French Cooking. Meanwhile, back in America, everyone wants her back because her TV show was such a success that it's the only thing that is keeping the employees of this fledgling network in their jobs. And that's where we find our characters at the beginning of season two. Both of us really love this show. And... I had forgotten how much I loved this show until I started watching it again and getting into season two. There has been a shift for me with regards to how I approach the season. Oh, So as I was watching season one, I was really interested in what was true, what was made up, which parts of Julia Child's life was fictionalized, which characters were added to the TV show for dramatic effect, and all of that stuff. And so I remember after watching episodes, I would Google or get on YouTube to like look at comparison videos of what she really was like, or who that individual is, and who that producer on television is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Coming into season two, I found that the writing is so solid that they've created these characters that I've stopped caring about all of that stuff. Mm. I'm really invested in these people. Like B.B. Newworth's Avis, I'm just like, oh, she's maybe getting into a new relationship. She's met this guy. She's having some issues with it. I'm like suddenly invested in the lives of these characters as opposed to looking at it as some kind of fictionalized history of Julia Child. No surprise, I didn't do the stuff that you did in the first season. But there was stuff that I was curious about, right? I was curious about, was it that difficult for her to get her show on the air? Was right. there that much pushback from the men? If you watch Lessons in Chemistry, it's kind of a fictionalized version of a Julia Child story. I will also say I'm about halfway through, no, I'm more than halfway through the season. I'm about episode six of eight. And I I feel like... Season two is going to be a much, feels like a much bigger story. It feels like it's going to be addressing some probably secrets. It feels like it's going in a more serious place now. It's not just the happy fun fun of season one. Yeah. For better or for worse, I like where it's going. I like that it isn't just a, oh, look, at Julia Child trying to make a TV show work with her TV show friends. They're diving deep into the relationships between these characters. But also just more of who Julia Child is as a person. And I think that's interesting as well. Like, I didn't think I wanted it, but season two has made me realize that I do want it. Watching the relationship between Julia Child and Isabella Rossellini Simca in the first few episodes when they're in France... And seeing that conflict play out, it is so brilliantly written because, you know, here are two people who are collaborating on something and they both have very different approaches and ideas as to how that thing should be. And then, of course, there is a conflict based around Julia's fame because, mm. you know, is she really a chef or is she just a TV personality? Yeah. And yeah. that's really bugging Simka. But then there's this great moment in episode two when they just kind of hold each other because they're drunk and they're like, I love you. I love you too. No, I love you more, my sister. I love you. And I was just cracked up because it feels like every sisterly relationship. They're not really sisters, but you know what I mean. But also like towards the end of episode three, I think, or episode four, when when Julia Child finally has to leave France and, and go back to the US, there's a real sort of like blow up between the two of them yes. and how they have to sort of repair that relationship. And I think it feels both small, 
like parts of me was wondering why were they doing this? Is Simka jealous? Is it jealousy based? But it's not. It feels like it's a I want you to be better than just a TV show host, whereas you are starting to fall into the I'm just a TV host thing, maybe. I think there's a bit of that. I think there's also a bit of coming to terms with breaking away from tradition. Yes. I think throughout these four episodes before they blow up, there is this notion that this is the French way. Yes. And Julia Child falls back on what will American women want? And it's quite interesting because that's what she's celebrated for, right? Like today in 2023, when you talk about Julia Child or you read about Julia Child, it was this idea of this woman making complex French ideas accessible to the American housewife. That first book, it almost feels like that's what Julia Child wanted, but not necessarily what Simka wanted. Because from from season one even, Simka's thing of like, oh, this isn't the French way, and this is how the professionals do it, and this is how you do it seriously. But Julia Child's way is, yes, in traditional French cooking, it's a duck, but you can't get duck in the US as easily, so we're going to substitute it with chicken. But the French thing is, oh, but then it's not cassoulet. It's it's not duck. That that push and pull of of even at the time being modern and being traditional and sticking to what the roots of a dish may or may not be. What the show does very, very well is give us characters based on real people. It almost feels like they've extrapolated characters from those existing individuals in history. I don't know enough about them to say this with any accuracy, but for me, it feels truthful. And I think that's what makes it work so well. Like at no point am I pulled out of the show because I go, that's not believable. Julia Child specialists and academics will probably push back on the show, but I think that's kind of not the point of the show. The point of the show is to reintroduce the idea of Julia Child and make exactly. Julia Child a rounded character, a real thing, right? And I love what they've done with it. I also just want to say, and I hope this is true, if it's not, nobody tell me otherwise, but I love the relationship between Julia and Paul. I think that's just the sweetest relationship ever. In our review, I think we just loved the way David Hyde Pierce was drawn as her husband because we also thought, that you couldn't surpass Stanley Tucci because mm. he played Paul in yes. Julie and Julia, right? But David Hyde Pierce does it really, really well. And of course, you see that character grow as well because in the first season, there was a little bit of conflict with regards to his own career because he was somebody. He was a retired diplomat. He's an artist. And then, of course, it is the time of Julia, right? Yes. And there's this great moment when... They're in bed together, and I think it's in the second episode. And Simka's husband asks him about what he wants to do in the later years of his life. What would be his legacy, right? And he looks at Julia and he goes, oh, my marriage. And it's just these really sweet moments between them. And I think he plays supportive husband really, really well. David Hyde Pierce is excellent. There's a bit later on in episode four or five when, when they're being interviewed by Life magazine. And the journalist asks Paul that exact same question, right? You're now just Julia Childs' husband, essentially. And he gives this really beautiful explanation comparing their relationship to an iceberg. And I was just, I wanted to marry David Hyde Pierce. The writing in this is so, so good. I'm hoping this is what that relationship was. Because, you know, also like you mentioned, Stanley Tucci in his version of Paul Child also has the same thing. They're very supportive, always there for Julia. And I think, in, in lesser hands, there may have been a need or a want to add drama, a need or a want to make it more exciting, right? And not just this really sweet husband who's taking photos of his lovely wife cooking around the kitchen. Where the show goes later on in season two with the problems faced at the TV station, the slightly more expanded story of Julia's editor... Judith Jones and her boss, Blanche, that feels like I don't need this one. You're doing a lot more. There's a lot other drama here that I feel like it's nice that you have the Childs as this really sweet, loving couple to come home to. 
there are a couple of things that this series does really, really well. And it's a decision that, yet again, in lesser hands, would have been made differently. So, for example, they don't rush getting Julia back to America. Mm. In most shows like this, or actually in a lot of shows, when a second season comes on, I mean, even if you look at something like Master of None, right? He's in Italy, but they need to get him back to New York as quickly as possible. Yeah. You would think maybe episode one in France, everyone's talking about Julia coming back next week. Let's get her back. Let's get the TV show going again. That's where the drama and conflict is with all the chauvinistic men, blah, blah, blah. But no, they don't. They take their time. And so you actually get to build these characters out in France. The other great thing about that, and I think it's always a sign of good writing for me. This is a very minute point and a hill I'm willing to die on. But sure. when a show does dinner parties well, mm. for me, that is great writing. Like any party sequence or lunchtime or dinner time sequence is always so hard to pull off because there's so many things happening at the same time. Yeah. And so if you think about the extended party sequence in Breakfast at Tiffany's, fantastic. If you think at this, if you think about the lunch sequence in Sally Rooney's Normal People in Hulu, yep. Yep. because... They always use the dining table as a moment to build conflict, right? Yeah. And even in this, when Stocker Channing goes on about how we are all kept people, mm. it's a great, great moment, right? Yeah. And then yeah. after that, James Beard just goes, when a party's over, honey, a party's over. The other thing for me about writing a, about writing a dinner scene is that you can't just use it as a setting. You know, you can't just use it as a place for a previous conversation to continue. Yes, exactly. You have to use the moving parts that are in their room. Because suddenly there are like eight or ten people around the table. Yeah, but the way these writers have built that eight or nine, ten people, there's weight everywhere, right? Even between Judith and the random Belgian singer, yes. right? There's weight there. There's, there's a tension there. Even between James Beard... Stockard Channing and another gentleman who's also happens to be there. There's a tension that, that nobody wants to touch, but everybody just accepts is in the room, right? Yeah. Even between Simka's husband and a throwaway line he had had with Paul Child earlier the day when they were both around the garden and he just goes, I threw out my back making love to my mistress. You know, there's, yes. there's all these sort of like little landmines that that as an audience, you're sitting there waiting for something to go off. Let alone, let's not even forget the fact that they're all there because Simka and Julia are having a, a, a vote off. Yes. So there's a lot of weight there. And I think to not just focus on, on that Julia Child Simka moment by letting all these little things that you've built or rather building to that dinner scene and giving all these relationships places to be and having little plot holes and potholes is what makes it very interesting. I'm so happy season two lived up yeah. to season one. Sarah Lancashire remains great as Julia Child. I think the cast as well, the way they use the cast is absolutely fantastic. You know, you've got David Hyde Pierce, you've got B.B. Newworth, you've got some incredible names. Isabella Rossellini, Judith Light, Rachel Bloom is in season two. What's interesting is, of course, there are these fantastic character actors who are just kind of dropped in, like without any fanfare. And then, like, honestly, I was just like, wait, Stoker Channing? Yeah, what? Same. And, and they're all so good and everything is so, it, it just feels incredibly natural and underplayed. I keep forgetting that Simka is Isabella Rossellini. Correct. That is how well her character is designed and written. She's not walking into a room going, I'm Isabella Rossellini. Yes. Where's my light? You know, it's, it's so underplayed. She's, just beautiful as that role and you mentioned it so i'm like oh shit that's right simka is isabella rosalini and i think that balance between the writing and the stunt casting i want to say is perfect because you're not drawing attention and like hey it's the stalker chatting episode it's oh yeah she's there it's isabella rosalini as simka you know it's oh yeah rachel bloom's joining the cast you know it's it's really just by the way characters coming in to do their work and it's all beautifully written. Don't sleep on this one. If you're sleeping on it already, wake up and watch Julia. It's on HBO, which if you had paid attention earlier, 
you can, of course, watch on the new Astro. Better than before, no rain interruptions, all of that stuff, you know? Check it out. Let us know what you think. You know how to reach out. All of our social media feeds are GogglerMY. You can also email us on podcast at goggler.my or send us a WhatsApp on the Goggler hotline, 012-524-5208. Drop us a line on any one of those channels and we'll send you a link to join our new Discord server where you can chat with us in real time. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Goggler Podcast.